There's nothing like fresh bay leaves to go in this tomato herb jam recipe. To begin with, I have six pounds of tomatoes cored and chopped in this stainless steel pot, one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, three cloves of garlic, and my two fresh bay leaves from my bay laurel tree. Now you're going to want to cook this uncovered over medium high heat an hour or so or until it is reduced by half, stirring very often. After it's reduced, you're going to stir in a cup and a half of sugar and turn your heat down to medium. And you're also going to add a half of a cup of balsamic vinegar and a fourth cup of Pinot Grigio or other dry white wine. I didn't have Pinot Grigio, I had some Sauvignon Blanc, so that is what I used. Now, here is an example in a recipe where they give you options to substitute because you also add in two teaspoons of Herbs de Provence. I didn't have Herbs de Provence, I actually used Herbs of Italy, but it mentions in the recipe you can use equal amounts of dried thyme, crushed dried rosemary, dried marjoram, and dried oregano, or any combination of these. And my Herbs of Italy was exactly that. Over a medium heat, you're going to cook this uncovered for about 45 minutes or until very thick. And again, you need to stir it occasionally. This grown up ketchup looks beautiful, doesn't it? At this point, you want to remove the bay leaves. And I also wanted it a little bit smoother. So using an immersion blender makes very quick work of uh, the seeds and the skins if you desire a smoother, thicker jam. So again, we're ready to can. You're going to ladle your hot jam into your hot jar. I'm using uh, half pints, which is what is recommended in the recipe. You're going to leave a quarter inch of head space Remove your air bubbles. Double check your head space again after you've removed those air bubbles just to make sure uh, it, we're still right at a quarter of an inch. Wipe your jar rim with a paper towel dipped in vinegar. Then you're going to center your hot lid on your jar. Apply your band. Adjust to fingertip tight only and place your jar in the boiling water canner. Repeat until all your jars are filled and you're going to process your jars for 10 minutes. Remember to adjust for altitude. I always add a splash of vinegar to the canner before I start boiling it because this helps keep the jars clean from mineral deposits and it also keeps the canner clean. Bring it to a boil and then you process for 10 minutes. After you've removed your lid, you need to let them sit for five minutes to acclimate uh, a little bit more, cool off a little bit more because you don't want uh, to just pull them right out because then you could, you could cause siphoning of your product out of the jar because of such of the drastic change in temperature. And when you take them out, you want to take them out straight up. There is going to be water on top of the ring, but don't tilt it. Just carefully take it over to your towel covered surface or 
um, some kind of mat that you have to set it on. The recipe for this meatloaf came out of the ball canning book on the page after the tomato herb jam. It's on page 54. I'm beginning here by adding a tablespoon of olive oil to a hot pan and we're going to saute some vegetables. Onion. It calls for a half a cup but I did a little more than that. We like a lot of onion. A third of a cup of minced uh, celery and also a third of a cup of minced carrots. Now we're going to saute these in hot oil for about mm, five to seven minutes or until tender but not brown. Then we want to remove from the heat and cool completely. While the vegetables were sauteing I went on to the next step. In a large bowl, I have a third a cup of milk. Now the recipe calls to add three-fourths of a cup of soft, fresh breadcrumbs. But I had dehydrated some bread, and I'm using my dried breadcrumbs. But I had dehydrated a loaf of bread that was getting a bit stale, so I'm using my dried breadcrumbs and only a half a cup. A half a cup of dried breadcrumbs is the equivalent of three-fourths of a cup of fresh. Now we're just going to let this stand until all the milk is absorbed into the breadcrumbs. To this we're going to add two large eggs lightly beaten. And then we're going to add, well, I added a tablespoon of dried par uh, parsley. It calls for two tablespoons of fresh one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a teaspoon of Herbs de Provence. Next we're going to open up that beautiful jar of tomato herb jam and you're going to add a half a cup. Now it doesn't call uh, to do this but I always with meatloaf type recipes like to blend all of my wet and dry ingredients there, the herbs, together before I put the meat in the bowl and mix by hand. This recipe calls for a pound and a half of ground pork and it also calls for a pound and a half of ground beef. But I put the pork in first and mix that together, then add the hamburger. The reason I do that is because ground hamburger will get tough the more you mix it. So you want to mix it gingerly. Adding in the beef. Oops, look what I forgot to add. The sauteed vegetables. Ideally, I would have put that in the bowl before adding any of the meat. You want to cover and chill for at least 30 minutes, but no longer than 4 hours. On a large rimmed baking sheet, you want to place a piece of aluminum foil, and then you want to spray that foil uh, with cooking spray. Next we're going to shape the mixture into a 9 by 5 inch loaf. Then you're going to 
Cover it loosely with another piece of foil, also coated with cooking spray. Bake at 375 degrees for 45 minutes. Now for the side dishes, I wanted to do something interesting. You might remember if you watched What to Do With All Those Cherry Tomatoes Part 2 that I made some roasted tomato butter. Here I've pulled two packages out of the freezer and I'm going to melt this tomato butter. Using some of my Yukon Gold potatoes harvested from the garden, I've placed them in a dish and I'm covering those potatoes with that beautiful roasted tomato butter. Getting it all combined and then covering with foil. Now I placed this in the oven with um, the meatloaf after it had um, cooked about halfway through its cooking time. After the 45 minutes, you want to remove it from the oven, uncover, and you're going to spread the remaining half a cup of that beautiful jam over the meatloaf. Bake it 10 more minutes or until a meat thermometer inserted in the center registers 165 degrees Fahrenheit and the jam is beginning to caramelize. Let stand for 15 minutes before slicing. Oh, and I took the foil off the potatoes too at this time so that they would get golden brown on the top. And there you have the beautiful meal. Meatloaf, golden Yukon potatoes in roasted tomato butter, and fresh pink eye purple holes, cow peas. <laughs> from the garden.